Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Renovic. Berto is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Hey, I, I, I got my show reviewed a few days ago. And one of the things that they said is, I talk too fast when I'm starting the show. They say I'm trying to rush it. So slow me down, people. Slow me down. Slow me down. If I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. Slow down. Slow down. I am trying, but I get so excited as I come to see my peeps. Anyway, welcome, Michael Rutten. Welcome, Paul Fleming. Welcome, uh, Bridge MCP. How are you doing, my dear, beautiful sister? E2247, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. Paul Fleming Sr. is in the house once again. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Missed you this morning. Uh, let's see what else we got. We've also got, uh, para ver, Yvette Avery Herod, La Preciosa Beautiful. Yvette Avery Herod, as well as, I think that's what I've got for now. Those of you that are on YouTube, give me those thumbs up, please. Give me those thumbs up. You know, just in the last couple of hours, I feel a little bit of a cold coming on. I got to go down after the show and make me one of those real, real, real strong, acidic lime lemon concoction. Every time I feel this way, if I can get it in quickly, it'll be fine. Anyway, anyway, let's go ahead and start with what you guys are telling me. Por Politico. Politico, according to Michael Rudden, says, Trump knows what he's doing. The creator of Godwin's Law says the Hitler comparison is apt. The Internet legend explains why the Biden campaign isn't wrong to compare Trump to Hitler. Trump's opening himself up to the Hitler comparison, Mike Goodwin said in an interview, and in his view, Trump is actively seeking to evoke the parallel. You you could say the vermin remark or the poison in the blood remark. Maybe one of them would be a coincidence, Godwin said, but both of them pretty much make it clear that there is something thematic going on, and I can't believe it's accidental. I never thought it was accidental. You know, here's the deal. He believes that he can. T- there are enough of the people that are going to be turned off from this election, and his people are going to be turned on because, you know, that hatred that they have is so is so persistent that... That's what he think he can drive, uh, drive home and drive to the, uh, you know, drive to the thing. Well, what can I say? Anyway, the Colorado judges are getting a whole lot of threats now. Look, le- look what I tell folks, right? I was on a radio show this morning, W-A-W-A-O-K. And what I was trying to tell, you know, uh, it, uh, people were calling in and they were. I, I, I was telling them how disappointed I was in Biden, but I said I was still voting for Biden. And these people, some of the people went kind of berserk. I can't mess with my morals and do that. And I ultimately explained that you're not voting for Biden. When you vote for Biden uh, in this election, if it's a Biden-Trump third-party election, Voting for Biden doesn't mean voting for Biden. Voting for Biden means voting your interest above and beyond Biden. And then you later on have to do whatever you got to do to mitigate Biden. But we have to be smart. But I'm going to get that show, process it, and I'll probably play it tomorrow. The, the, the bits and pieces that I did on the WAKO uh, in Atlanta this morning. All right. Oh yeah, Paul. I was in Atlanta. I was on the on your on a program in Atlanta. I should have, you know, I didn't even think about it. I should have sent you a link to uh, the show on point on W A K W A O K in Atlanta this morning. Well, actually, it was at noon in Atlanta. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver. Come on, mouse, move for me, move for me. Michael Ronan says, Esquire reminder from 2017. The creator of Godwin's Law says. You definitely should compare white nationalists and Nazis. Matt Goodwins wrote, by all means, compare these SHIT heads to Nazis. Yeah, they're Nazis. Uh, Bridge MCP says litigation is pending in 13 states and challenges are being appealed in two others. Crucial swing states, Michigan and Arizona, according to Lawfare, a nonprofit law and policy analysis publication tracking the lawsuit in Maine. 
where state law requires the Secretary of State to preside over ballot challenges, a declaration on Trump's eligibility is expected in the coming days. Wow. Uh, E2247 says white supremacy and Christianity. Three discussions, September 22, October 22 and 23rd. And he has the information in there. And it is a cold that's coming on. I can feel it. I got to go knock it out later on. All right. Melanie Keelan says, happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday, Melanie. Paul Fleming says, damn, just imagine if Americans were just as against Africans coming here in the beginning as they are now. <laughs> Paul, Paul, that was so funny. I'm Even if I must admit it myself, that was so funny. Whoa, why didn't y'all feel that way about Africans back in 1619, man? You'd have you would have you would have prevented all this talk about reparations. I mean, think about it. Actually, no, because the country would not have been the country because all that free labor that built the country into a powerhouse would have been moot. It would not have been there, Paul. So that's the answer, brother Paul. All right, uh, Bridge MCP said, "Hey, Paul Fleming, senior, but still, he's still liable for 148 million." Uh, well, what is that the answer for? Uh, oh, damn, just. Okay, okay. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's see. Michael Ranessa Egberto, uh, a four minute video I want you to check out sent by FB might be worth clipping for tomorrow's show. Thank you. I saw that you sent me a message. I got to remember to look at it later on and, and check it out. Uh, Paul Femin says Rudy Giuliani says he's bankrupt after $150 million judgment against him. Check his hair dye and wooden teeth account. Yeah. And not only that, check about what he's stolen and probably taken all, all through the Caribbean, right? We got to do, do some searching and all this stuff. Michael Rodnan says, bridge a tangent to the article. This might be worth review after the show. You guys are giving me work, but I thank you so kindly for the work. Uh, Michael Rodnan says, Egberto, you're doing fine. We always front load your chat with stuff to read. Yes, you do. And I love it. Keep doing it because a lot of times you even change the conversation by doing that because you find you guys find some great stuff. In case you missed it from Paul Fleming, special counsel Jack Smith has filed the U.S. government reply brief in support of his request for, serial, for the Supreme Court to immediately take up Trump's claim of presidential immunity. Yes. And Lee Grant is in the house. Hi, Lee Grant. Tom C. is in the house. He says hot tea with lemon. To keep the cold germs in check. As soon as I'm done with the show today, I'm going to do that, brother Tom. I'm going to do that. Eric Hayes says authoritarian discussion this morning was turned via Brian and telling him his reality based thinking was wrong because you disagreed with it. No, I told him his reality based thinking was wrong because it was wrong. You know, there are certain things that there's not two sides to every uh, ar argument. Some arguments don't have two sides. One is wrong and the other one is right. And he was wrong. Where he was right, I told him so. And I think I told you that this morning already, Eric. Why do you repeat stuff over and over and over again as if it's going to change reality? That's a problem. You're not going to change reality, my brother. You won't change it. All right. Uh, Paul Fleming says, but the election integrity units established are expanded in six states after Trump's loss obtained only 47 convictions during the period in which 10 million votes were cast. I know 47 conviction and they, they only went after black people and that thing, man. It's funny, right? Black people and Latinos. The funny thing about it is most of the convictions otherwise were people trying to double vote for Trump and all this kind of stuff. But hey, what can I say? By the way, the poll just came out. Half of voters approve Colorado Supreme Court's decision. Over half of the voters support it. Something is starting to happen. All right. Eric Hayes says people have all kinds of interests and it is okay to be different than your interests. Of course it is. But Eric, 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 is this phone black? If, if Brian this morning told me this phone was blue. Would I take that as an opinion worth not complain, not 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 seeking, telling the truth about? Well, that's what he was about this morning. All right, it was that it was that simple to go against what he had to say. All right, 
Uh, let's continue here with my great people. Uh, let's see. Uh, Paul Feynman says, break in Wells Fargo workers in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, won their election to form a union with CWA. Yes, becoming the first ever Wells Fargo's you workers to unionize. It's happening, but we got to keep the pressure on. We got to keep the pressure on. Uh, no general polls. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Let's hope it works. I was having a little problems with the phone this morning, but let's see. All right. Come on in, Ray. Are you, can you hear me, Ray? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You know, I was on a radio show on this headset earlier and they couldn't hear me. So I wanted to make sure all was working fine. How you doing, brother Ray? Talk to me. I'm good, brother. Uh, Edberto, I heard you talking about, you know, voting for Biden and, you know, it's it's so sad to me, and, and and I use the word like Trump would say because a lot mm-hmm. of people like him for whatever reason. But right. you know, it's sad to me that in the progressive wing of the party where we occupy space, that we have to convince people why you should vote for Biden, not because you like him, but because the other option is trash. Period. That's that's yes. that's the way I see it. Anybody who likes Trump, okay, maybe I could concede you might like him for his wittiness. You might like his hair, his horrible tan, the way he roasts anybody who he feels has wronged him or came at him. Okay, fine. Cult of personality. I get that you like that about him, but understand that a lot of people who voted for Trump don't like him. They find him detestable. They hate him, as a matter of fact, but they like the movement. And that's what we need to try to make people understand. It's not about the person. It's about the movement. It's about the work. It's about the policy, like you say. Ray, you and nailed the it. the only person... I'm sorry, let me step back. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to finish your comment. Then I want to tell you, uh, uh, it's, expand it's, on it. It's about, but yeah, it's about the policy stance of the person that you're voting for. And I don't know what it's going to take. What is it going to take for people who identify as Democrats who want more out of the government, but always complain that they can't get anything out of the government because they never listen to us, the government that is. Well, if you are not putting your voice out there, what are they listening to? Hello? Right. Now, here's the thing, Ray, because you said something that I said either this morning or yesterday. I don't quite remember that uh, that even even, you know, people talking about taking Trump off the ballot. I don't even care about that too much. OK, because the thing about it is what Trump has is a movement and Trump is just the head of that movement right now. And absent Trump. We will just get a smarter head of that movement. Let's give an example. You take a look at Johnson, the new speaker of the House, right? Uh, Turn the sound off so that you don't hear the stupidity that he talks about, so that you don't know that he's saying something nonsensical. He looks like your typical American politician that's sensible. Listen to the tone. Then start to listen to him. Listen to the tonality of what he says. If you don't, if you are not politically savvy, some of his stuff actually sounds practical. So what we have to do are, uh, is realize, first of all, that the MAGA movement is just that, a movement. And some people are attracted to it because it gives some an air of superiority, right? It's the same white supremacist crap that we've had in the country for a very long time. Some people, to, to give themselves importance, need that white supremacy message, I mean, it, it, it is because the life, one's life is so de- deprived that you have to be able to look at you, Ray, and say, at least I am not black. At least I'm not a person of color. I can live within my skin because at least I have something you don't have. That's what supremacy breeds. What I was explaining today at on on uh, on the WAOK station, which is a predominantly black station in Atlanta, 
is that we have to get off that topic because a lot of them were really at, a lot of them were coming and the way they they met, they talked about Jews or Europeans that 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 taking over the world. I'm like, no, it's not Jews and Europeans taking over the world. It's a very small snippet of people that are that are pulling all the strings and then inserting all the things to divide us. And it's my standard statement. When we unite the ghettos, the barrios and Appalachia, we win. And believe it or not, it went over very, very well at that station. In other words, they started to think, ah, yeah, it's unity. Even when I said I'm not voting for Biden, I'm voting for our interest. It went over well. It's all in how we put it. And what we have to do, Brother Ray and everybody else, is we have to go out there and and give the message better than the right wing is given to mostly white people, okay? To uh, mostly white people and also people of color that have an inferiority complex. We have to go ahead and make the case that we are all in this boat together. And it's it's the big shots that are harming us all. Uh, once we get there, it's all good. Anyway, anything else you want to say, Ray, before we move on? I mean, basically, man, we got to. You gotta are you fight there, Ray? The good fight. We got to fight the good fight. Can you hear me? We- yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I think you're in a, in a in a compromised position. We have to fight the good fight. You're correct. Okay. Oh yeah, let me. Okay, yeah, let me. Okay, now I can. It, this is better. So <laughs> okay. yeah, what I wanted, to, yeah, what I wanted to say basically is, we can't, we can't let up on the short game. Okay. No. Vote for your interests. Put the brakes on the MAGA movement. That's what I right. want to say. Exactly. Ex- and that's you know, and I I want us Ray. To, to, to not to work on, and like I told him at, on the station earlier today, I want us to work not on emotions, but work on practicality. That is how, you know, when we talk about the man, meaning the man that's running everything, that's pulling the strings. And by the way, the man can be just as, as much Gates as it can be Johnson. And I'm talking about Johnson who owned BET. All of them are pulling the strings, Okay. We have to be smarter and work together to, to, to win this battle. And that starts by eliminating, the, uh, making sure, not eliminating, neutralizing the MAGA movement, adapting those folks that are in there. There's many of them that actually are reachable. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much, Ray. Anything else before we continue? Oh, yeah. I mean, just look at it. Just look no other, just look no further than the other side. If people keep doubting, what can happen when we organize? Look at the other side. If we Amen. organize the ghettos, the barrios, and the working class, then just like they organize the fascists, the racists, and the corporate greedy, you know, lobbyists, we can do the same. Just look at what they do. Just like healthcare, and we could look at their system, but that's a whole another conversation. Yes, I'm gonna jump is. off this call because I know you got some videos to run. I'll yes, be sir. watching, brother. Thank you, brother. You have a great one. Let me continue reading what my great brothers and sisters are saying. I'm pretty sure Rudy doesn't have a hundred and million million dollars, but the problem is that Rudy continues lying about the poll workers. The judge needs to tell Rudy that any further statements would qualify as contempt of court and statements. Yeah, and they just throw him in jail. All right, let's see. Eric Hayes says, black and white reality, Jack, is your problem. Huh? I don't know what that means. All right. Paul Fleming says the GOP is fighting Ukraine and because Trump wants to appease Putin. At the 2016 RNC, the Trump campaign only platform was to weaken support for Ukraine. And and what Trump got impeached for the first time was illegally withholding Ukraine aid. What does Putin have on Trump? I don't know. Maybe the yellow showers or something. Maybe you have the videos of the yellow showers. I don't know. I'm just kidding, guys. Lee Grant says RCP. Election, Trump 46.8, Biden 44.5. But guess what's the magical there? Uh, That's probably the peak for Trump. If Biden is at 44.5, where do you think that people that that aren't the the 7% that's not poll, where do you think they're going? Think about it. All right. I mean, I love that poll, actually. If it's really 46, 44, 
I can live with that. I can live with a 46, 44 poll. And I tell you why. Because I know where their other percentages are going to go. I know where they're going. And it's not Trump. All right, let's see. Michael Rudden says that phone looks dark gray to me, but that's just my old eyes. Why did you have to do that to me? Uh, You are correct. It is gray. So you're telling me I'm wrong. And you're right. I'm wrong. It's gray. Damn it. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Rudy has 10 million plus a bill in New York City apartment, but the 148 million can not be bankrupt case. Well, I'll, you know, she'll be earning money off of his wages for the rest of his life. Uh, what else we got here? OK, I'm scrolling down. Whoa, I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. Michael Ren says he took. No, that's been to another thing. Uh, Paul Fleming says Substack Inc. says it will remove or demonetize Nazi content. Substack co-work, co-founder Hamish McKenzie plan to strip bad ideas of their power is to profit from dissemination. Them, uh, you know, I mean, a whole bunch of Substackers and I, I, I got onto the bandwagon too late. I didn't realize a lot of Substackers were Nazis or, or putting out Nazis material. I didn't know that until one of our, a guy that used to be on our show, uh, actually sent me one of his mailings. So I didn't know that. All right. But he says, like I said before, the general poll for Trump, if convicted, dropped 25%, and his charges made up, made them drop 15%. Lee Grant says Trump had two less. World wars and one less border crisis than genocide, Joe. Uh, yeah, but he killed, uh, he, he caused the death of hundreds of thousands of Americans. I don't think, e- even with the, the genocide that Israel is doing right now, that many people haven't been killed yet. That's a bad thing to say, but you got it. You got it. All right, what else we got here? Sharkula's here, stylist is here, and she says, married to everyone. And we've got Bridge MCP says, hit the spam comment. Thank you, Bridge. Appreciate that. All right. Paul Fleming says, when you tackle the pandemic, increase economic prosperity and fund police departments, perhaps this shouldn't be a surprise that crime dramatically declined. News coverage of sensational events, if it bleeds, it leads, certainly skews American sense of crime is everywhere. And it's a shame because that's what our, our dumb, uh, dumb folks here in Houston, uh, the politicians I'm talking about, have been fooling people into believing. Daniel Ado says, doing his part to keep race hate alive. I don't think so. I think if you listen to my commentary, just a little transient listen of it would realize that I love everybody and I believe we're all the same. And I think race is a stupid thing, but we live in a racialized society and have to work within that context. But maybe that requires a little bit more uh, levels of indirection in the, the thought process that most people get. But you don't, my dear brother. Let me know if you need some more explaining. I'm more than willing to do so. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, Michael Reza. Egberto, you cut off the nuance at the end. Wouldn't want to give any of the conservatives in the chat the idea that I'm for Jalen Rudy without cause. I'm pretty sure Rudy doesn't have $150 million. But the problem is that Rudy continues lying about the poll workers. The judge needs to tell Rudy that any further such statements would qualify as contempt of court to save any such state to save any such statements for the appeals court or it's off to jail for you. I agree. I didn't realize I missed that part. Maybe I just said it in my head. All right. What else have we got here? Uh, Eric Hayes says, you always say bad orange man has lost a popular vote. Well, he did. Uh, and you talk about the, the I, I I get tired of people say we are not a democracy we are constitu- we are a constitutional republic. Yep. All right, whatever. Trump's incompetence in handling the pandemic resulted in excess of four hundred thousand deaths from COVID, whereas Israel's has killed over twenty thousand Palestinians. Personally, I wouldn't like making such a comparison, but this year isn't over. Israel's offensive started in October. Ouch. Yes, I hear you, but the rate is still a lot lower. But again, this is. One people in one area. Well, I guess in America, it was one people in one area, too. But anyhow, first video of the day is going to be about the polls, since that's what folks wanted to see. Uh, This is what it's going to take, folks, uh, to to win over young people's vote, because that is where uh, we're bleeding right now. We're going to have a lot of work to do. With letting people understand that they, while they may be physically voting for Biden, 
what they're doing is voting their interest. But I want you to listen to this little piece uh, from Kornacki and, and a few others, and then we will take it on the other side. Let's break down the numbers on the polling with NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki. All right. Yeah. Interesting new poll here from the New York Times and Siena. Interesting because they've done something the other pollsters haven't yet done. You're going to hear a lot about this, though, in the next few months. It's a matchup between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, if Trump does end up being the Republican nominee. And they polled it this way. This we see commonly right now. Registered voters, broad pool. Everybody who's registered to vote could be part of this poll. And they have Trump leading by two points with registered voters. And that's consistent with a lot of polls we've seen recently. A close race, a Trump lead of a few points in many polls. Those polls you've been seeing generally are testing registered voters. What the Times also did here and what other pollsters will start to do as we get into 2024 and get closer to the election is likely voters, not just registered voters, but voters who are likely to turn out among those registered voters. It's a little narrower pool. And here you see they find Joe Biden with a two point lead. So it's Trump with registered voters, a bigger pool and Biden two points up with likely voters. And a big part of this is the registered voter advantage for Trump may be, you know, it's interestingly, it's younger voters. In some cases, it's non-white voters. Trump's doing better among them, among registered voters who it's not clear if they're actually going to show up and vote in 2024. So I think that's a question here that we have heading into 2024. We'll probably be talking about all year. There's signs that Trump has made some inroads with some constituencies that haven't been friendly to him in the past, but it's also not clear those folks are going to turn out and actually vote for him. And you can see the potential difference there uh, in terms of who does show up in this election. So that's a big question we'll be looking at. And and again, the other thing here in this poll that's interesting, and we've seen this in some other polls, is a dynamic in 2020 that's been flipped, age. So start here at the youngest uh, end of things here. In this Times poll, they've got Biden ahead uh, and the youngest group, 18 to 29, by three points. The margin for Biden over uh, Trump in 2020 was 24 points. So this is what we're talking about, Trump making inroads with younger voters. And then on the other end of the spectrum, Trump in 2020 against Biden actually won the oldest voters, 65 plus by four points. Now Biden leading in this poll by 11 among older voters. So again, this is something we've seen in other polls. It's an interesting shift. Trump making inroads on the young end, Biden making inroads on the older end. And we'll see if that dynamic holds. A lot of discussion there too, I think about What's driving that, Yasmin? Steve Kornacki, thank you. Appreciate it. Want to bring in Director of Polling at the Harvard Kennedy School Institute of Politics, John DeLavolpe, um, to talk more about this. Some really fascinating stuff there um, that I want to dig into, John, um, if we can. A lot of flip-flopping um, going on there, right? You have Biden gaining with older voters. You have Trump gaining with younger voters. Some registered, um, some likely voters um, as well. You actually did your own polling uh, between, I believe, it was October 22nd and November 6th. Some of your findings were similar. That was three weeks or so into the Israel Hamas war. Then, though, you found Joe Biden at 41%, Donald Trump at 30%. What I thought was fascinating, though, John, was that 15% of those that you polled said they would not vote if the matchup was between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Talk us through that. That's right. I think like the bad news around that is, yes, relative to where we were uh, four years ago, there was less enthusiasm about voting generally. That's not a good thing. The good news is in less than a year, 10 plus months or so, we know what we need to do to turn that around in terms of like talking about civics and the importance of three things to young people. First of all, democracy can and has worked one. Second is government can do big things. And I think There's a lot more of the Biden track record over the last several years that has not been communicated to a place where younger people understand the over $100 billion of student debt relief, as an example, the most significant investment in climate, et cetera, could go on. And the third thing is there is a distinct difference between the two parties. Those are the three elements that I think, Yadzman, need to be in the consciousness of younger people to even have a conversation about them voting at the levels at which they voted the last several election cycles. 
we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead. Number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Now, let me tell you something, folks. If you listen to, if you look at that poll, it's just really scared to be Jesus out of Trump, actually, because uh, Biden really flipped old people to Biden. And the ones that, w that went flip a bunch to Trump are not the steadies. They're pissed off at Biden right now because of Israel, justifiably. But when they, as Bonaparte or whatever uh, his name is, I can't remember his name correctly. As he said, we know what we have to do to talk to those uh, teenagers, talk to those young people. We know what we have to do. And part of that message is, look, you know what Biden is, did is absolutely wrong. But here's what he's going to do that will be absolutely right going forward that Donald Trump isn't. And while he'll hold on, that Biden is likely to hold on to the older folk, Trump cannot hold on to the young people who currently claim they're going to vote for him. So when I saw that poll, I was actually much more positive, even though the polls have been kind of messed up all around, I was more positive that we won't get that criminal in chief as the next president again. But I want to address Brother Ledo. I mean, this, this requires, uh, this does require an answer. And I want everybody to listen to this. I want you to listen to what Daniel Ledo has said. You know, the right wing likes to claim they're constitutional and they just want you to follow the constitution. Your second amendment rights, they want to read it to the letter of the law. Here's what Daniel Ledo says. The cold civil war ramps up with Marxist states like Colorado trying to keep Trump off the ballot. Wonder what will happen if they effing around, if they keep effing around. Now, I thought you're, you, you believe in your guns and all of that to protect the Constitution. And I also thought that in protecting the Constitution, you also believed in state rights. Those are the things you guys preach. The Constitution specifically says if somebody was a part of an insurrection or anything of that sort, are there many of those, those uh, insurrectionists that were convicted under ins the insurrection clause? Yes. We have several convicted insurrectionists who were in contact with Donald Trump. The thing that the Constitution didn't say he needed to be convicted of insurrection, which he should be, but he was in, he was palling around with the insurrectionists. He was giving directions to the insurrectionists. I will march down there with you, is what he said. So, therefore, these judges followed the law, the rule of the Constitution. And Ledo now doesn't want to follow it. Let's hear what Mark Elias has to say about that. And then we'll take it on the other side. Because Mark is clear that, you know, it's constitutional. Let's listen to him now. Because, folks, it is, in fact, constitutional. All right, what do you think about this, really? Look, I think the Supreme Court of, of Colorado got it right. And what's really struck me in so much of the commentary in the last, what, 24 hours or 12 hours or so, is how many people recognize that fundamentally the court got it right, that, that Donald Trump incited an insurrection, um, a violent mob to sack the Capitol to prevent the certification of the election for president of the United States, uh, that he was a former officer of the United States, he was a former president, he took an oath, and that therefore, under its plain meaning, he is disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And what's curious to me is that people, rather than stopping there, 
They then start offering a bunch of excuses, but this would be an extraordinary holding, but this would disrupt the, the elections. Look, the rules are the rules. The Constitution says what it is. And for a country that has come to accept what are pretty outrageous rulings from the U.S. Supreme Court around, for example, the uh, the absolute epidemic of gun violence in the United States, because they insist on a plain, uh, a plain uh, and absurd outcome uh, reading of the Constitution, for people to then say that in this case, it's a bridge too far, I think is really dangerous for democracy. This guide rail exists for a reason, and it needs to be followed. What does this all mean, though, from a timeline perspective? Look, I think this case is going to move very, very fast. Um, it's Defined going to, very, very fast in legal terms. Great question, because what's fast for lawyers is not fast mm -hmm. for the country. So uh, Donald Trump's legal team has until the beginning of January to ask the Supreme Court to review this case. They'll obviously meet that deadline. Supreme Court will take the case up. I expect uh, there will be very fast briefing in the month of January uh, with an oral argument probably by the end of January and a decision sometime in February. I love what Mark Elias says. You, you know, you, just because it doesn't fit your profile, you now don't want to follow the Constitution. Now, here's the deal. Donald Trump lost. Uh, Donald Trump has never, ever received the majority of the votes in this country. Yet, we had to follow the rules of the Constitution that because it, he won more votes in the Electoral College because of the undemocratic nature of the Electoral College, we let him have his presidency because, according to the rules of the Constitution, even though most Americans did not want Donald Trump as their president, neither time, neither in 2016, where he lost by 3 million votes, or in 2020, where he lost by 7 million plus votes. He was never wanted by most of the Americans. Yet, because of the Constitution, he held the job. Now, he created an insurrection after he lost. The Constitution says you cannot be president again or any elected office if you do that. We're just following the Constitution, something that the right loves to hang on to. And when it affects them, nah, we don't know if we want it so much. So let go, uh, be consistent and stop threatening uh, the revolution that you're implying, a violent revolution that you're implying. The truth of the matter is uh, the, the military will be ready in the event that a whole bunch of numbskulls come with their militias and try to do something, they'll put down, be put down rather quickly because the support that many of you think you have, you don't. All right, let's continue. Uh, Michael says, younger voters are seeing what Israel is doing. The indiscriminate bombing, the atrocities that result in 20,000 plus deaths, seeing that Biden isn't pushing back against the horror, that's why Biden lost a lot of the youth vote. And that's why it is still recoverable. That said, I should be clear, Trump would make the Israel-Palestine situation worse. That's the point, Mr. Rudnin. You may I get you always you always come back. Trump would side with Netanyahu without thought or consideration of the damage. They would only serve to accelerate the death toll. Exactly. Paul Fleming says was reading that Finland housed all their homeless and within six months, 80 percent had found jobs. Coincidence? No, it's always known that if you have a, a place to live, you actually have a better chance of getting a job. All right, let's see. Daniel Ledo says, Paul, yes, please replace old Joe with Obama. But how? Joe has to go and Kamala too. Whom? Hum. How does the party get rid of? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Obama can't return to the presidency at all. It's constitutionally impossible. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Macaroni says, you're not hearing me, are you? If an independent chooses to vote third party, let them. You're not going to convince some people to vote blue or red. A whole lot of them, fellow, my fellow Americans, are done with both parties. Robert Davenport is in the house. Robert, I haven't seen you in a while, brother. Presidents are not elected in December of the year before the election. No one is voting now. LOL, wake up and stop chasing media narratives. Um, let me just say one thing, though, brother D uh, Davenport. There are some tea leaves that we need to read. It's not about uh, media narratives right here. 
But um, there are certain things that Biden is doing that are that's very, very. Um, what's the word that I want to use? He's poisoning the well too often, and I think he needs to. People need to score him up now. Michael and say, Berto, a lot of those convicted insurrectionists blame Trump for lying to them, pushing them to action, giving them the marching orders. I know they did. They did. They did. They did. All right. Uh, let's see. Daniel Ledo said, I believe in rule of law. You Marxists are destroying the same. Proof culpability. You can't. You can't even prove it was an insurrection. <laughs> I mean, only, only people who watch Fox News or right wing media think that th- that breaking windows and choking police officers and throwing feces around and going into the speaker's office and uh, and 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 threatening her with bodily injury and running after uh, and running after people if you cannot see that that is an insurrection it proves our point about you okay it proves everything about you we saw it on tv we had people there we have the officers that were hurt. We have people barricaded in offices. We have all of that as examples. And you still don't want to acknowledge it, that it was an insurrection? I rest my case. All right. Uh, let's see what it is. Carl Cox says, while Joe Biden is not a good president in my opinion, Trump would be a dangerous president. He and the followers want to end American democracy and install Trump as a permanent dictator like Putin. All right. Uh, Michael has a response to Lado. Doesn't recognize January 6th was a failed insurrection. <laughs> I won't read the rest. All right. Let's see what else we got here. What else we got here? Robert Davenport says Trump is not eligible to be elected president again. Full stop. I agree. Don't cry to me because he couldn't contain his criminal proclivity. Not my fault or his. All right. We got a call here from Wilmer, Texas. All right. Wilmer, Texas. Come on in. How can I be of assistance to you or? What would you like to add to the conversation? I guess you don't. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's continue. Carl Cox says, oh, no, no, wait. Um, uh, so I wish I could block. <laughs> I got you. Uh, Carl Cox says, Trump and his MAGA followers want Putin to rule all of Europe. Would be interesting, right? Uh, Paul Fleming says, now that Representative Scott Perry, rep- uh, Republican of Pennsylvania, must disclose 1,600 uh, 59 phone records, texts, and Jack Smith for his investigation into Donald Trump's activities on January 6th. I wonder if Marjorie Taylor Greene is getting nervous. Yes, she should. Egberto Willis, don't you know it was Antifa and... Bl- <laughs> you know, it's amazing that they, that some believe that, right? Bridge, I know, I know. Mike Cisak says, Egberto, we are now seeing videos showing the opposite of what you're talking about. How police were escorting people into the building. <sighs> you know, remember yesterday we spoke about one being ignorant. I've, I've been ignorant of a lot of things. I was ignorant about uh, uh, accepting uh, or not accepting. Who the hell am I to accept? Knowing that uh, homosexuality is just another uh, way people are. I was ignorant about knowing that women's rights should be just as uh, as as uh, protected as men's rights. I was ignorant of a lot of things. And then I was schooled. I was informed. I had people who held my hands and and turned on the light for me. And I moved from being ignorant to being aware. I moved from being ignorant to being awake. In other words, woke. But when you choose to try to justify your ignorance with fallacies that people will then bring upon you, ignorance changed from ignorance to willful ignorance. And willful ignorance makes you irrelevant to society. Because again, What's your relevance in in moving anything? Willful ignorance is the issue. Robert Davenport, great to hear you, my brother. Talk to me. Um, Well, Alberto, uh, nice to talk with you finally. Um, Just wanted to say, you know, they're talking about whether or not there was an insurrection. People have been convicted of participating in an insurrection. So that, that question of whether or not police were escorting people in or not, 
That's a moot point. People have already gone to jail for it. There was an insurrection. You know, you, you know, wait, Devonport, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you. That's all I needed to have said. My Dremia. Yeah. That's all I needed to have said. Thank you, sir. Continue, please. Yeah. Now, about, about, about the 14th Amendment, and people say, oh, it's unfair for Trump. No, Trump took an oath. Now, that the um, shaman guy, the guy who had the, the horns on his head. Yes, you know, yes. Up like, you know, buffalo horns on his head. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's uh-huh. running for Congress. He's eligible to run for Congress, even though he participated in an insurrection. Because the clause in there is you're ineligible if you had previously taken an oath. He had not previously been an officer, or I guess not in the military. He had no oath that he broke. Oh, it's, wow. It's, it's, for it's for people who break their oath because, because he's such a liar. He right. Broke oath when he became president, he broke the oath. He's ineligible. You know, hey, Davenport, you see why I love my callers? I love my listeners. I love the people that, that we surround. I didn't think about that one. You're right. If you if you were participating in an insurrection, but you weren't an officer of the government, you can still run for an office again. Wow. Correct. Because post post Civil War, if you were just a, a member of the, 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 the Confederacy and, 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 and a Confederate soldier, right. had never been an officer in the Union Army, never been an elected officer, now in the, the reconstructed South, you could run for federal office and be elected. But if you right. were like the 14 senators who got kicked out, yes. they couldn't go back because they yes. broke their oath. I, you, I, that that never ever crossed my mind. Even though Bridge is saying, "Egberto, I said that, I said that," it never crossed my mind. I, I, I the, the truth of the matter is, I was just thinking these folks participated in an insurrection. They can't be, they can't be, you know, can't run for anything. But anyhow, wow, you know, well, they can't. As long yeah, as they long, can't. As long as they didn't take an oath, they can't. Right, right, right. That that's when you break your oath. You can't. R- they don't. The, the United States under the Constitution does not trust you ever again to live up to an oath once you violated it. Right, Full stop, right. You know, the Supreme Court's going to be stuck there. Good. Hey, thank you very much, man. It looks like we got, our calls are coming in. Thank you very much for calling in, my brother, okay? All right, thank you, bye. Thank you. All right, brother, c is on the air. Come on in, brother c talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. All right couple corrections yes please no one has been convicted of insurrection no one please please tell us what they've been convicted of sir most of them are charged with with um basically entering uh, a building illegally okay Uh but most of those are thrown out okay um there was one guy who actually his case was thrown out because basically he had his own video and it showed that there was a cop waving him through the door into the building. And so the judge basically threw the whole case out. Okay. There was a whole bunch of other people that never got to see video because they didn't have video because for some reason, Democrats wanted to keep it secret as far as the 14,000 hours of video. I wonder why. Jeez. Okay, CSEC, um, CSEC, my, CSEC I, I, I'm with you so far, but let me just ask you something. So, a jury in the so district. The, the only other. Wait, wait CSEC, CSEC, I made you talk. Give me a chance to yeah. answer, please. Uh, a jury in District yeah. of Columbia t- today returned guilty verdicts on multiple felonies against five members of the Proud Boys, finding four of the defendants guilty of seditious conspiracy. That's not inter- that's not inter- uh, insurrection. An insurrection is a seditious conspiracy. But continue, my friend. No, no, that's a completely different charge. All right, go ahead, go ahead, continue. That's a completely different charge. Sorry. It, but see, the thing is, and this this is what gets me with a lot of leftists. They don't care if it's legal or not. They care about power. Mm-hmm. Okay, it, 
Trump has never been convicted of anything. In fact, he went through a third uh, congressional impeachment, and the Senate came back and said no, that he that he was innocent. Basically, mm-hmm. is what they All said. Right. Okay, so he was never convicted of anything as far as Trump. All right, now. You Mike, can say Mike. all you want, opinion right. wise, but Mike. the presidency Mike. is not not listed in the Fourteenth Amendment. Actually, uh, is is the presidency an office? Yes or no? No. Is there the office no. of the presidency? Yes or no? It's it's stated in the Constitution, office of the presidency. It's, it's read the your, read, the president read your Constitution, and who is the uh, who is I the have. leader? And who leads? CSAC, hold on. And who I runs know. the office of the presidency and officer of the United States? Because it's uh, the person He's who runs an off. No. The person who runs an office is an He's officer. Not. All right, Mike. I got uh, we, we only have five, uh, we're at fifty five. But let me just tell you something, Mike. Okay. Right. I've, I when I listen to you, right? You are such a sm- uh, 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 a smart person. I can listen to how you use your, you try to use your intelligence to twist things around. I'm saying this with respect, sir. All right. My question to you is why don't you use that for, how should I put this without sounding presumptuous? Um, why can't you use your intellect, if you will, for the right cause? Why would you use your intellect on trying to defend uh, first of all do you think it was okay for people to throw feces around in a in a, in a capital and that kind of stuff i'm sure you don't i'm not even going to let you answer i'm sure you no. don't uh, you don't right you don't correct correct and, and the, all and right the okay hold on hold one, stop 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 mike see see stop one should have been convicted see stack see okay. stop stop see sec let me finish still talking to you brother let me finish talking to you yeah you as a an individual human being, I am sure, based on having been with you for years now, that a lot of what those animals did out there, and notice I call them animals for a reason, you wouldn't do. But there is something within this ideology that has you defending or trying to defend somehow. I have a, I, we are running out of time, so I'm going to cut you off here. I'm going to ask you a favor to do for me. Okay. I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Go ahead and mm-hmm. make believe that you are a progressive for one day. And then let's talk about it. We'll have an interview of you thinking about what you would do as a progressive for one day. Okay? Mm-hmm. Do that for me. I want you to really think about all the things okay. you know that pro- progressives stand for. Mm-hmm. And then I want you to justify it for me. It's an exercise that I want you to take. We did an exercise like this at Move to Amend with our right wingers. And it was amazing what the results turned mm-hmm. out to be. So do that for me and then we'll have another okay. talk. All right. Okay. Thank you, brother. You have a great day now. Yep. All right. Now, hey, wasn't it great hearing a, a voice from Mike Cisek? And doesn't Mike Cisek sound pretty, you know? Cool. So I, 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 we, we're going to get somewhere sometime. Anyway, folks. Anyway, 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 anyway. Carl Cox says, I can't, I can't repeat that, Eric. I'm in Carl. Anyway, let's see what else we have. Um, we are close to the end of the program. So what I'm going to do, I have some homework to do because that Michael Rudnan gave me some homework to do with a video. So I'll check out the video. And... Uh, no, CSAC, we just got off the phone. You can't say I ignore facts at all. All right, let's go ahead and uh, ask you guys to support the program best you can to make sure that we can stay doing what we do. So please go ahead and go to politicsunright.com slash support, politicsunright.com slash support. And you can find a lot of different ways in which you can support this program to make sure we move forward. Hey, we have conservative supporters too, but I don't think Mike Cisak is one of our conservative supporters. You should be a supporter as well, Mike, Mike Cisak. Uh, likewise, we have our newsletter. Our newsletter is free, 
But for everybody who subscribed to the newsletter as a paid subscriber, which is saying I'm going to give Politics on Right a coffee a month or so, uh, you get to read all of my books in my Substack. You know, on my Substack, all of my books have been, or well, two of them have already been transcribed to the Substack, or I'm doing the rest. You know, there's not enough time in the day. But so please become a paid subscriber to our newsletter by going to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. Uh, it's free, but if you subscribe, we have some perks for you. Uh, you know, I, I want knowledge to be out there for everybody. You know, that's what we have to do. And the conversation that you just heard between myself and Davenport, between myself and CSAC, between myself and Ray, uh, I, I know a lot of my progressives listen to CSEC and it, they want to pull their hair out. Um, I get it. I get it. But let me just tell you, uh, he's an American. He's a part of our team. He's a PDR Passi. Persuasive Barry says, we need to keep the message simple. Re-engaging young voters around women's rights. I agree with you, Persuasive Barry. And I think that's what they're going to do. I think that's what they're going to do for the young people mostly. Mostly, and for women in general. Anyway, it's four o'clock and I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.